So this is going to be my submission for uh, Bubble Ghosts for the Game Boy for SGDQ 2017. And this is going to be an all-level speedrun proposed as a race between me, Proto Magical Girl, Garbanzo Guy, and Slash Infinity. Uh, this category showcases all 35 levels that this game has and uh, is pretty cool. It's only about a year old in terms of like speedrunning on the leaderboards and stuff because uh, we kind of... Uh, got it going and we're racing a bunch and have since made a bunch of progress in terms of optimization and tricks and little um, skips and stuff. So this is a really exciting time for this category and I think it would be a great time to showcase it in a race uh, nonetheless because the four of us are really really active in kind of um, cutting this time down lower and lower. The record I'm going to use here is the current recorded world record of 8 minutes and 30 seconds, uh, although I'm sure this is going to go down much farther just because there's even some new glitches that we found involving like screen wrapping and stuff, so we'll see. But for the time, I'm going to use this and make some commentary. So this was done on an emulator, BGB, but um, I typically do runs on Game Boy Interface for the Game Boy Player, uh, and I use like a cart and everything like that. But yeah, so timing on this starts when you... Um, hit uh, start on the screen. I'll raise the volume a little bit. So yeah, um, music by the way, some of the greatest Game Boy soundtracks of all time, if I do say so myself. But yes, yeah, so um, essentially what you just saw there is the main mechanic here. You wanna push it to the little opening at either the left or right of the screen, or even the top or bottom on occasion. And um, you have this, you have the, the, the mechanic of being able to push it by blowing on it. Depending on where you are relative to the bubble, he'll shoot it in that direction. So you have to really be mindful of like your aim. And um, over the course of playing, you kind of get a feel for how hitboxes work. Um, not every tile is solid right when you can, when you can see it. There's kind of like a one or two pixel um, buffer zone there. So you see me um, kind of keep really close to walls, almost cut it a little too close um, within one or so pixels um, just to optimize movement efficiency and stuff like that. There's even some little segments where you have to solve puzzles by blowing on these little um, switches to kind of activate like fans and stuff, or deactivate them I should say. Here's the first kind of like sequence break here. You can kind of go underneath that bubble if you kind of play really carefully there and kind of cut the corners really close. Some of these levels have timed things, like these little timed walls that will kind of show up and disappear. You, you usually want to try to beat that cycle. Not too hard if you kind of just keep the bubble going. Um, you'll see here, I kind of keep the, keep the bubble moving, some of that momentum, so I can just go really quickly. So the first 10 or so levels are kind of like a primer for a lot of the mechanics you'll see. Um, and then it kind of ramps up in difficulty from there. This stage can be a little tricky. Um, it's actually advisable sometimes to go a little slower here so that you can kind of like enter these pincer cycles when they're kind of moving up as opposed to getting them a little too fast. A lot of levels you actually have a lot of leeway um, to kind of get it around places sometimes um, you do still want to play it really close to walls just to cut corners minimizing distance optimization and stuff this is the famous um, elephant level well, if you choose to tickle the elephant he kind of makes this like little face if you blown him um, always cute always a nice incentive <laughs> for for showcase runs uh, level 14 is where at any percent you would typically have to go north to get that skip it's pretty simple in all levels, you really just kind of go straight to the right to left. This little zigzaggy level, you can kind of cut the top and bottom of these areas by just going straight a little bit. And this next level actually is one of the many little optimizers that wasn't implemented here. You can actually skip the cycle. I choose to wait. Oh, actually, no. That's one level after. That one's pretty simple. Just another little switch.
and then coming up here, yeah, um, there's another little cycle here. This level is a little trolly. <laughs> it kind of puts you in a bad spot at the start, so I have to push it a little bit to the right first. Something to be said about this game too is that you have a lot of lives and about three continue. So if you were to lose all six lives that you're given, you get another 12 throughout the rest of the game. So it's incredibly safe um, in that sense, especially if you play carefully. Yeah, you can um, go as fast as you want basically without the risk of dying. Um, Made a little mistake there. I actually missed a quick cycle there because I moved. Um, I think that only cost about two seconds overall. Oh, I have a I have a gold sound <laughs> that when I hit it, it's like a guy talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so then the stage two. Uh, just want to make sure you dodge the pincers there. So like basically like after level 24, 25, that's when this game, uh, they, some of these levels really kick it up a notch and you'll see what I mean. Some of the obstacles, um, you have a lot less space to work with. And because of that, you just have to like basically really know where and where hitboxes will end, start and end. Like here, there's about like two pixels of clearance there. So you have to play it really tight. This level there's actually a pretty tricky cycle skip the if that um involves some timing knowing when those lasers are gonna reappear after doing it so many times you sure just get a feel for it fan levels are mostly just about understanding like the physics of the fans and once you kind of get a feel for them similarly um you have to kind of work with them and just keep the bubble from shooting into obstacles um, That would, that's the next place in any percent you leave, where you would just do a level skip. I actually got scared there, and I opted out of like a quick cycle. This level has a lot of optimization, like you see there. By missing that cycle, you kind of cost yourself a little bit of time by missing all these early cycles. I think that only amounts to be about four or five seconds overall. But um, I've never done RTA, so I could bring my gold a lot lower, and if we're going to attempt that, a couple other runners have already started implementing that, and it's it's pretty tight, but it's a really, really good time safe. Um, uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're working right now on implementing a lot of, like, even, like, the glitch strats, which are frame-perfect and stuff, so it's getting pretty exciting. Um, I'm really hoping this time gets a lot lower. Here's another little sequence break. You can opt to go between these princes, and luckily you're kind of met with this really perfect cycle right at the start there, if you get there fast enough. A lot of this game is really about beating cycles. Um, once you feel confident enough to kind of avoid like going deathless and stuff, you can just really think about um, getting cycles as fast as you can. This is the kind of the, the final stretch um, at this point. If you can do good about um, just keeping optimal, you, it's uh, mostly about keeping your cool if you know you're on a good pace. And at this point, I knew I was about 20 seconds ahead of my BB, so I was like really freaking out. Um, luckily, I played this pretty decently. Um, didn't take too much, um, didn't lose too much time. I played it a little safe there. I didn't want to hit that little corner. And then from there, um, it's just about getting to freedom there. So yeah, that's the whole run in total. Really high intensity, really fun. You can tell it's just a really fun ride. And from there, 
I'm actually going to pause it because I start talking. Um, but yeah, so from there, um, yeah, I think it would be really cool. It's really short, which makes it really good just for a marathon, fitting in just four people sitting there having fun doing a race. We're all really talented um, runners, I think. Um, like I think it's because we're all just having so much fun optimizing it. So by the time SGDQ comes around, we'll be really ready for this. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, and have a good day.